Welcome back to the Fast and the Nerdy. One of the things you need to optimize your race car is the position of the center of gravity. So we need to know where it's located in the X direction. So that's along the wheelbase. So uh, X axis here. We also need to know in the Y, uh, Z direction. So if we were to hit a bump, the car would go vertically upwards and that's the Z direction. And the last one is along the axles. So that's the Y direction. So if we look down this car here, we're sort of looking down from a bird's eye view. We have the X direction again. And then this direction here is the Y axis. So all we need to do to find the X and the Y axis is we need to get four scales so we can chuck each of the, the wheels, a scale underneath the wheels and we'll get each of the car's weights. So here, this is, I live in Australia, so I'd be sitting over here. We're gonna call this one the driver's side wheel. This is gonna be called weight one. And the passenger side is weight two. Then we will call the rear driver's side weight is W3 and the passenger side is W4. So these, each of these W's are just the scale weight that we recorded. We then need to get a tape measure and measure our wheelbase. So you want to go from the centers and we're going to call that this is L. Um, we also need to calculate our front axle weight. So that's just W1 plus W2. And that's so weight on the front axle is just W1 plus W2, pretty simple. And the weight on the rear axle is WR is equal to W3 plus W4. And we obviously know the total car weight is W, which is just all of those summed together. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate it along the wheelbase because that's the easiest so all we need to do is take the moments about one of the axles so i'm going to do it about the front axle here um, we also just need to come up with a coordinate uh, like a, a distance so we're going to call the distance from the front axle to the center of gravity as l1 and then the center of gravity to the rear axle as l2 And then we just take the moments about A. So, gonna assume that's positive. And then we can easily see that the first thing we wanna do is WR. It's coming up around the A in the positive direction. And that's our distance L. We then have the total vehicle weight is acting down. So it's going negatively. And now it's at a distance L1. And then all that is equal to zero. As we wanna know what L1 is equal to, we can put it on the other side and then divide the W through. So we end up with L1 is equal to WR L, divide that by the total vehicle weight. So you can see here, we know whereabouts it is on the um, X axis, just by using the tape measure and a couple of scales. And we also know uh, where L2 is equal, cause that's just L minus L1. So the next thing we want to calculate is whereabouts it is in the Y direction. So we have here the center line of the car is this orange dashed line. Um, and we want to know sort of how offset it is. And the reason we're interested in the offsetness is as we are coming into a corner, we slam on the brakes, we shift load from the rear to the front, this front right driver's side tire is going to get a lot more load so the amount of load is all dependent on how offset this is so if it was way up here it's getting a, a large percentage of the total vehicle of weight and load shifted and this side here would be getting far less so when we're trying to optimize the balance of the car we will need to know how offset this is so one thing we can do is either increase or decrease tire pressures on one of the tires to try and even out the pressure distribution on both. 
because if the center of gravity is too offset, for example, you slam on the front brake, this side here is going to have a lot more potential for braking. Because it has more potential, it could potentially grip more, so it's going to brake harder on this tire, and then that's going to sort of pitch us around to the right there, or go around in the yaw, around to the right, as we're coming into a corner. And that's obviously not ideal. So if we know how far off the center of gravity is in the y direction, we can sort of try and correct it by moving some things around, like the battery, and that sort of thing. Um, so what you probably notice is that this car has some skinnier tires on the front than it does on the back. So it's got some big fats on the back. So one of the measurements we need is the track width. So as you could imagine, because we've got fatter tires on the rear, the track width is going to be a bit smaller. And the track width is just the center of the tires, the distance between the center of the tires along the axle. So here we have um, track width on the rear here. And then we have track width on the front. And we could see here that it's offset by this amount here. And I'm going to call that Y. So the offset is Y. And we also know that we can quickly see that Y is equal to half of the front track width minus half of the rear track width. So we can just write that like this. The next thing we want to learn is the offset of the center of gravity from the center line. And to do that, I'm going to well, I'm going to call that distance y2. And we're also going to need the distance from the center of gravity to this line here. And the reason we're using that line there is because I'm about to take the moments about that line. You could do it about any other line. I've just chosen that line because why not? Um, so if we look up in the top right corner, we can see uh, a front view of the car. So we've got the front tires here sticking out the front. We've got the gray big fat tires at the back. Uh, and then we'll just move the some of these distances across. So we have the rear tire to the center of gravity. We called that Y3. We have the rear track width, that is TR. We have the front track width, and we called that TS. And then we have the offset, which we called Y. And as we've already chucked it on the scales, we know that this here is W1. That's going to be acting up direction. The weight on the rear driver's side is W2. That again is going to be acting up through the ground. Um, we have the total vehicle weight. That's acting down through the center of gravity. <coughs> and we also have the front driver's side. We need to know that, which we recorded. Oops, sorry. That should be W3. And because we're going to take moments about this line here, we don't need to use the rear passenger side. So the first thing we do is make that positive. So we can see that the W, the total vehicle weight at a distance Y3 is going to be positive. So we'll do that one first. W times Y3, we can see that W3 is going to be negative, and that's a distance TR, so we minus that off. We've also got W1 coming up negative, and that's going to be at a distance of TF minus our Y. And then the last is W2, and that's going to be going positive. And that's at a distance Y. Again, we make that equal to zero. And we want to know what w Y3 is, so we're going to put that on the other side. 
that would be negative, so we times the negative 3. W and then we times negative one and we can see here we've now got the offset ah oh, sorry the distance from the center of gravity to that rear tire and all we've used is a tape measure and some scales and then we can also see that the distance between the offset from the center line, which is the end result we want to get, y2, is just y3 minus half of the rear track width. And there we go. So we've now got the position of the center of gravity in the x-axis and the y-axis. So the next bet, uh, the next one we need to do is the height in the z-axis. And this one is a little bit trickier than the other two. Uh, so what we do is we pick the rear of the car up, that shifts the center of gravity, and <coughs> we then compare the front axle weight with the uh, front axle weight we recorded earlier. So to do this with some sort of accuracy, you need to fill the car with all fluids, um, so it's got a full tank of fuel or however much fuel you use when you race around. You need to put uh, a weight or have the driver fully booted and suited sitting in the passenger uh, in the driver's seat, sorry. And you'll want to put replace the suspension, so the springs and the dampeners with a metal bar. So there's no compression of the springs and dampeners. You'd also want to pump up the front tire to stop tire wall flex. So there's no, you've got the minimal amount of um, the tire compressing as possible. So that will get us the most accurate uh, accurate results. Obviously that's not very safe to have the passenger, uh, the driver sitting in the seat. So you probably wanna put some sort of an equivalent weight and depending on how high you lift it up, it might not be safe to fill it full of fluids, especially the fuel. So you might wanna replace that with an equivalent weight as well. So what we do here is we put a scale underneath the front tire. So this is the front of the car, that direction there. We have the front tire here still on the ground. We can see here we've got the original center of gravity where we calculated it earlier. We then chock the front wheel to make sure it doesn't roll away, try and make it a little bit safe. And then we pick the rear of the car up. Now you could pick the front of the car up and chock the back wheel, but you'd have a lot of weight up in the air. So it's a bit safer to put the leave the front on the ground. Um, as you're picking it up, you would you need the tire to or the wheel to be able to move. So you know as you're picking it up here, so we've got the original tire position here. And then as you pick it up and it sort of pivots around the front because it's chocked, it's going needed as it's moving up in the uh, Z direction it also needs to move in the X direction because we're coming around an angle like that. So this is pretty exaggerated, but I thought it might help with um, explanation. Um, and then once you've picked it up, we then record the weight on the front axle and then we use some trigonometry wizardry, which is, uh, it's not really that complicated, but this video has already gone pretty long. So what we're sort of doing is we know the front axle, we know that the wheelbase length is L. So we now have a new right angle triangle. That distance there is L. We know how high we've picked it up. So this is the height we've picked it up. And we can use those to get our angle here. Um, now the distance you want to pick it up, it's sort of been suggested that the minimum is 250 mil. So we need weight to transfer towards the front. So 250 mil or 10 inches is enough to sort of get the center of gravity moving. Um, the higher you go, the more accurate it should be. Uh, I mean, you wouldn't want to go too high. I mean, the higher you go, the, the less safe it is. So you sort of got to sort of work it out for yourself. But if you just do the minimum 250 or maybe 300, do like a foot height, it might be a little bit more accurate and it's still fairly safe. So now that we've raised it up, We've got the, the new weight on the front. 
so we just use the numbers we've got and we put that into the this equation here so the equation we need is our height and center of gravity is equal to a1 and a1 is the front wheel dynamic radius so we'll do this um, just with normal tire pressures so we measure the height from the center of the front axle to the ground this is when the car is sitting on the ground so we've got the the tire flattens out and we take that into account so we know that uh, radius there or that distance there so we just measure it with a tape measure just chuck a tape measure on the ground measure to the center of the axle you've got a1 we then use l2 over l as we know before l2 is the center of gravity to the rear axle and L1 is from the front axle to the centre of gravity and L is the total distance we then add A2 and A2 is the dynamic wheel radius for the back so that's from the ground to the rear wheel centre axle centre and that's times L1 over L and then we plus the weight on the front axle and this is what we're measuring at the moment so we call that WF and we t multiply that by the wheelbase we then minus the total vehicle weight multiply that by L2 divide all of that by the total vehicle weight and then tan alpha and that there will now give us our height of the center of gravity so the more accurate we are with all the different measurements, the more accurate we are with our height of center of gravity. So a tape measure is you know, reasonably accurate, but if you wanted to use something that was a bit more accurate, the better you are, the better the measurements, the better the, um, the accuracy. Um, here in our example, we've had a, a fatter rear tire, and I've also assumed that the rear wheel is larger than the front wheel. If that's not the case, you can just use this formula here so we know a1 is equal to a2 because they're the same size and then we just wf2 times l minus total vehicle weight times the l2 divide all that by the total vehicle weight tan alpha so it's a little bit more simple uh, i hope you've enjoyed today's video if you have give it a like if you've got any questions or comments chuck them down below um, if you're into race cars and you'd like to learn more about race cars, you can check out our blog in the description. Uh, you could also subscribe, we've got plenty more videos coming up. And I hope you have a great day and I hope to see you at the racetrack soon.